Uh, this is section 9.2, arithmetic sequences in series. Uh, what we want to do is look at for patterns, and from those patterns we're going to develop equations for different sequences. So a sequence is a listing of numbers. Arithmetic sequence means that we have a common difference. And so we're going to go up by the same amount or down by the same amount each time. So if you look at the pattern here, these all go up by 3. So our difference is 3. Our first term, a sub 1, means our first term, so that would be 2. And if I want to find a sub 11, all I do is I take uh, 10 differences from my first term to get there. So I go 2 plus 10 differences, and then I'm going to end up with 32. That would be my a sub 11. If I look at this one, my difference is, well, now I'm going down, so this would be negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. It has to be the same all the time. So my common difference is negative 5. First term is 8, and so if I do the same thing, my first term is this, and then I'm going to do one less difference to get to that 10th, uh, uh, the 11th term, so I'm going to do 10 differences of negative 5. So if I do this, I get negative 42. Now, the formula that we come up with is based on this stuff that we have right here, and so we're going to take and find any term. Any term would be listed as a sub n. a sub n is going to be my first term, plus I'm only going to account for one less difference that I'm going to be applying up to that point than my number of terms, and so it would be n minus 1 times my difference. That would be the formula that we're going to be using. So, for example, we have a lot of examples here. We find the 30th term of this sequence. And so, once again, we've identified the difference, which would be 3, and my a sub 1, which would be 2. So, if I want to find a sub 30, that is going to be equal to, and once again, I'm using this formula, so I'll show it. It's going to be the first term, 2 plus n minus 1, n being 30. So, this would be 30 minus 1 times my difference. My difference then would be 3. And if you crank that out, uh, you can figure that one out on your calculator. Uh, I'm just going to set these up and then you can figure them out with your calculator. So if a sub n is equal to 173, so this is where I know a sub n and I got to find the other pieces. So I start off with the formula. And so a sub n is what I know, a 173. I don't know what n is. And so my first term is 2 plus n minus 1 times d, the difference. The difference here would be 3 again. And so if I solve this, I subtract 2 from both sides. And you could distribute this 3, but I would just suggest just divide by 3 as it is. So n minus 1 is equal to... 57, so n is equal to, this is where people make mistakes because they brain this, but bring the 1 over, in fact, in my notes I made the mistake, 58. Okay, so n would be equal to 58. Uh, for this next one, find a sub 1, or no, what is a sub 1, which is what you're doing, so the 30 30th term is this. So use this formula again, and I'm going to plug in negative 10, 21 is equal to the first term, which I don't know, plus n minus 1, so that's 29, and then times my difference, which is negative 5. And so you should just be able to solve this out. And I don't know if I have an answer here for you or not, but you can solve that one. And then uh, if a sub 5, here's the next example, a sub 5 is equal to 87, and a sub 8 is equal to 39. Find the formula for a a sub n. If we do this, uh, if you realize we're going up by the same amount each time. For every one over, we go up by the same amount. Or one over, we go down by the same amount. So it's very much like a linear equation. So what you could do is find the slope. And if you find the slope of this thing, then that would give you your common difference. So if I go 87 minus 39 over 5 minus 8, this would give me negative 16. So my common difference would be negative 16. And I want to find the formula for a sub n, so I still need a sub 1. And if I find a sub 1, you probably have to work backwards from that a little bit. And um, 
So how am I going to find this first term? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fifth term, and I know that to get to the first term, there's four differences. And since I'm going backwards, instead of negative 16, I've got to go up 16. So when I put this all together, a sub 1 is equal to, what do I have here, 151. So that's my first term. So finally, a sub n is equal to my first term, 151, plus n minus 1 times my difference, which is negative 16. And you could leave it just like that, if you prefer. So that's applying the arithmetic sequence formulas. So remember, a sequence is a listing of numbers. Now a series is taking that listing of numbers and you're going to add them all up. And so Carl Frederick Gauss, he was a very famous mathematician, and when he was in the third grade, his teacher asked him for the, uh, to add up the first 100 integers. And then the teacher was about ready to go out for coffee, and all of a sudden Frederick raised his hand and, oh, the teacher had to stop. And he could not believe that he figured this out so quickly. And so what Gauss did was this. He said, okay, if I have the first 100 integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. If you list all those out, and he did it again, except for in reverse order. plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. If you take this and these two sequences and add a series and add them up, you get 2 S sub 100 is equal to, this is 101. Hey, this is 101. This is 101. And so on, all the same. How many times do we have 101? Well, if you look at this in total, we have 100 of these. And so we can say that 2s sub 100 is equal to 101 times 100 terms, and then we're going to divide by 2 to get rid of this one. And so you get 50-50. So Gauss got that one very quickly. So that was that formula. So you can do the same thing for any arithmetic series by doing and generalizing it. If you notice, this is the first term plus the last term. First term, last term. And so all we're going to do is we're going to take S sub n is equal to the first term plus, oh, sorry about that, the first term plus the last term. And what do we multiply it by? Well, this is how many terms we have. And so that's going to be n. And then I get divide by 2 because that's how we set up this pattern here. So S sub n is equal to that. Now from our previous work, we have another formula for this A sub n too. So there'll be two formulas that we will see. S sub n is equal to n over 2. And then I get A sub 1. If I substitute out this A sub n, our previous formula was this for any term in a sequence. And we get that right there. Combine it together, and that would be on the turn page. A sub 1 plus A sub 1, you get 2A sub 1. So here's two formulas that you can use. This would be for uh, any sequence, arithmetic uh, se series, that you have the first term and you know the last term. This one would be used if you don't know the last term. OK, moving on. Find the 28th partial sum of, and let me get these formulas up here so we can see these. Find the 28th partial sum. 28th partial sum means that I have an infinite series here that goes on forever, but I'm only going to count up to the 20, first 28 uh, terms. So if I go S sub 28, do I know the last term? No, I don't. So I need to use this formula here. And so it's going to be N over 2. And I'm going to write this out, I guess, 2 A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times D. And so S sub 28 is going to be 28 over 2. 2A two sub 1, that would be 2 times uh, A sub 1, which is there, so that would be 10. Plus N minus 1 would be 27. And then D, my common difference. As long as this is arithmetic, I go up by 9, I go up by 9, so that would be my common difference. And so if I get the value for this, 
I don't think I calculated it. You can calculate that one. Okay, then number um, eight. Find the 50th partial sum of this one here. And so I do a very similar thing. S sub 50 is equal to 50 over 2 times my first term, negative 6. And I got to do two of those. So let me write 2 times. 2 times negative 6 plus n minus 1, which would be 49. And then my common difference, where I'm going up by 4. And so I could calculate that, and that would give me my sum of the first 50 terms. So you're adding all these things up. Can you write this in summation notation? Uh, hopefully we can. We've got to put the rule out in front. The rule is going to be from my general term, which would be this. This would give me my rule for the summation notation. So a sub n is going to be my first term, negative 6, plus n minus 1 times d, my difference, which would be 4. And I should simplify this a little bit, so it would be 4n minus 4 minus 6. So my rule is 4n minus 10. Summation notation. If I start this one, then I need to start this one from the first term. And my first term is going to be i equal to 1. How many terms do I have? Well, I go up to 50. And my rule is 4n minus 10. And I put that in parentheses. Now, double check, plug in 1. Yep, I got negative 6. Plug in 2, uh, I'm going to get negative 2. So that's working out. And then I go from 1, if you start at 1, to 50, there's 50 terms. So this is the summation notation that reflects this series right here. Those are the same thing. The next one was the seating capacity in an auditorium with 20 seats in the first row, 22, and so on. And there are 48 seats in the last row. For this one, I know a few things. First of all, I know a sub 1 is equal to 20. And then my dif uh, difference is equal to 2. And now I just need to know how many rows there are. So instead of using the series formula, I have to use the sequence formula to see where I'm at. So I go to my sequence formula to find out how many rows there actually are so I can get my series formula going. So if I don't know something, sometimes I have to go back to the sequence formula. So I plug all these things in. Stop this if you have to and double check where all this comes from. Subtract 22 from both sides. Oh, I'm sorry, my difference is 2. I can plug that in. And then divide both sides by 2, so 13n minus 1, so n is equal to 14. With n equal to 14, now I can do my sum. So s sub 14 is equal to 14 over 2. Hey, I know my last term, so I can do my first term, which is 20, and then my last term, which is 48. And you can crank that out in your calculator to figure that one out. So in this case, I could use this formula because I do know the last term. Now this last one, how much principal, if I take $2,000 and open up a mutual fund and I add 140 each month for 20 years, how much money do I have? Uh, it's not how much money I have because it, it doesn't give me my additional amount from investment, but how much principal do I have? Well, I know my first term is 2000 and then my difference is 140. That's what I'm going to be changing by each time. Now, is this going to be a sum or is this going to be a sequence? Well, it depends how you look at it. If I look at this, I'm going to say that my first term is 2,000. Then I'm going to have 2,140. And then I'm going to have 2,280 and so on. And so this is just going to be a sequence. Uh, so I'm just listing a, no a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to say a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, which is $35,460. If we did a series formula, then that would be way too much. Thank you.